Another character that we'll talk about today, and actually the last character for this session, was a man by the name of John Eliot. And John Eliot is someone who you can tell his story if you look at an old seal of the state of Massachusetts. See, Massachusetts has a new modern seal, but they used to have an older one that had a picture of an Algonquin native on the front of it, and there's like a little comic strip blurb coming out of his mouth in which he's saying, come and help us. In other words, the Algonquins were highly interested in these Puritans. They were the newcomers, and they wanted to know, are these people like the Spanish? Can we trust them or not? And the Puritans typically had very good relationships with the natives. They typically paid for their land. They typically worked out working relationships with them and lived alongside of them. And John Eliot was one of those leaders in that area. Eliot, who himself was a pastor, a little town called Roxbury, was someone who became what was known as the Apostle to the Indians. And specifically, in order to reach the Algonquins, he learned their language. He learned to speak Algonquin, and he even translated the Bible into their language so they could actually speak it themselves. He then went on a 70-mile circuit. That means that once or twice a month, or even sometimes more than that, he would travel 70 miles on horseback, going to all of these Algonquin villages, many of which he actually helped to found. These villages became known as praying towns, not just because they were places where there was eventually a church or some type of worship service, but because these were places where the Algonquins actually practiced things like settlement. They actually built real villages that were kind of modeled after the Puritan villages. Places where there was farming, places where there were schools, places where there was weaving and actually producing of goods, and places where there was real tight-knit community. What's sad about these praying towns is that during one of the many wars that the English fought against the French, the Algonquins were on the wrong side of the struggle. They were seen as somebody allied with the French. And so they were taken from these praying towns and they were put on prison ships out in the harbor of Boston. Now, Eliot, who didn't just say, that's awful, that's bad, didn't just stop there. Eliot actually became essentially a prisoner with them. He went to these Algonquins. He stayed on the prison ships with them. And when we come to why did he do all of these things? Well, we can look at Eliot's own words. He explains why he did these things. He says this, pity to the poor Indians, a desire to make the name of Christ chief in these dark ends of the earth and not the rewards of men were the very first and chief moves or motives. If I know what first did move and move in my heart when God was pleased to put upon me that work of preaching to them. So he did these things simply out of pity and out of a desire to serve Christ. That's what motivated him, and that's what motivated most of these Puritan heroes. That's why they're worth studying.